are grieving in a way that is just totally um, in, uh, uh, unbelievable this year. Um, so we already have a lot of names of, of folks that we need to remember this year. You can either tell me or email me um, or just write it on the list that's in the communication room. Um, we do have an annual meeting coming up to approve the budget. Council will be meeting tomorrow night at 6 o'clock to begin that process of putting our budget together. And we are adding a new Zoom opportunity um, Wednesday evenings in Advent. Just those four Wednesdays, we'll have a Zoom evening prayer. Um, so something you can follow along with and worship from your home. Any other announcements for our church family this morning? 
church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham, and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace to you, Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We live in one of the most economically, politically, culturally, and morally free countries in the world. Freedom is our watchword. You can just picture the bald eagle and the fireworks when I say that word. The concept of freedom is one of the most valued and debated ideas in Western democracies. It is central to our contemporary debates surrounding freedom of speech, women's rights, gun laws, voting rights, multiple other issues. We have free elections. We have freedom of the press, free will, free credit scores. What is all this freedom for? What are we free to do? What are we free to have? In the land of the free, what is the point of our freedom? What are we free for? Maybe that's one reason why the Gospel of John has become so popular in the West. Yet, Jesus' language of freedom couldn't be more distinct from our contemporary notions. In a stunning display of institutional forgetfulness, the priests shoot back at Jesus' proclamation. We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. They have forgotten who they are, where they came from, and apparently forgotten who God is. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Remember where you were slaves? You may not look like those slaves anymore, 
You may not be building the pyramids in loincloths, but you serve Rome now. You serve the empire. And in turn, the empire lets you live. So too, we are tempted to resist Jesus' words, but not without an irony of our own. For to do so dismisses the continued effect, for example, that the American history of slavery has had on our economy, or the continued abuses of human rights that confront us every day around the globe. The slavery that Jesus is talking about is not 18th century slavery in the Americas, nor is it limited to the situation of house slaves in the Roman Empire, or even the Israelites' experience in bondage under Pharaoh. In its own way, the good news of Jesus' promise of freedom addresses each of these situations, but Jesus is talking about something more. If we follow Luther's structural understanding of sin and understanding sin as being turned in on oneself, then sin is self-centeredness. And those who are doing self-centered things become slaves to themselves, to their own wants and desires. Bizarrely, this is often how people understand freedom, doing whatever I want to do. When the definition of freedom actually becomes slavery to oneself. Do we live as though we were in bondage to our own wants and desires? Or do we feel free to let God's word and God's will and God's mercy guide our actions? Do we relish in this freedom to do whatever I want as long as it isn't hurting anybody? Or do we remember God's call and promise for our lives? God has claimed us as his own, and through this promise, this covenant, this truth that came to walk among us as Jesus of Nazareth, we are set free. God has claimed his people from the beginning, and we have consistently forgotten his love for us. And that consistently breaks God's heart. Israel has failed and strayed and not been faithful time after time in the Old Testament. God's relentless determination to preserve God's beloved people leads to a new covenant. A covenant which the people cannot break. Because upholding the covenant is God's responsibility. And God decides to forget. Not only to forgive, but to forget. Having the truth set you free means having your desires and self-centeredness turned away from yourself. Giving becomes more important to getting. And at the extreme, dying for others is more important than preserving one's own life. While such self-giving can become a bondage in and of itself, it can also be done as a free response of love. Not something one has to do, but as a result of being connected to Jesus, honestly caring for another person. This honest caring can only happen when one is free not to care. You are free not to give of yourselves and your time and your possessions. You are free not to attend church. You are free to not live as the body of Christ and have compassion for the members of the body. The law does not demand your compliance in order to receive your eternal salvation, which comes from faith alone in Jesus Christ. We know this, but we forget. Because we have collective memory, too. We forget that we need God, that we need each other. We forget that we need this imperfect church full of sinners and saints to keep us in communion with all the saints. We forget that we need to be fed and to eat at the Lord's table to keep up our strength for the days ahead. Receiving a foretaste 
May God help our hearts to remember each day. Please stand as you are able. We confess our faith together with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, who suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Almighty God, giver of all good things, with gladness we give thanks for your goodness. We bless you for the love which created and sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, through whom you have made known your will and grace. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that the Lord has done for us and enable us to show our thankfulness by lives that are wholly given to your service. Lord, in your mercy. Give your wisdom and grace to all pastors and all leaders in your church, that by their faithful service faith may abound and your kingdom increase. Lord, in your mercy. In your mercy, strengthen churches and support them in times of trial. Make them steadfast in the work of the Lord, and let their faith and zeal for the gospel refresh and renew the witness of your people everywhere. Lord, in your mercy. Take from us all hatred and prejudice. Give us a spirit of love and dispose our days in your peace. Prosper the labors of those who take counsel for the nations of the world, that mutual understanding and common endeavor may be increased among all peoples. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Sanctify our homes with your presence and joy. Keep our children in the covenant of their baptism and enable parents to rear them in a life of faith and devotion. By the spirit of affection and service, unite the members of all families, that they may show your praise in our land and in all the world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Comfort with your grace all who are in sorrow or need, all who are in sickness or adversity. Remember those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. Bring consolation to those in sorrow or mourning, and grant all a measure of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our 
We remember with thanksgiving those who we have loved, those who have served you in your church on earth and now rest from their labors. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at the last to the joy of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you see that we need grant to us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and dreams Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Through Abraham you promised to bless all nations. You rescued Israel, your chosen people. Through the prophets you renewed your promise. And at this end of all the ages, you sent your Son, who in words and deeds proclaimed your kingdom and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, gracious Father, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us, and believing the witness of his resurrection, 
we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Amen. Come, Amen. Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord and of his resurrection, that we who receive the Lord's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. The body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.